on this stage at CPAC on Friday. You all happy to see the president? He's coming to see you. All right. He has a lot of accomplishments to talk about. And now, of course, these are all things that the Destroy Trump media never reports on because it doesn't fit their narrative. They are singularly focused on one thing, and it's not the truth. It's not evidence. It's not facts. It's about how to tear down this president by any means necessary. Now, that's why they'll never tell you that under the President Trump, this is one year. Unemployment in America, 17-year low. African-American, Hispanic unemployment have also reached record lows now under one year of President Trump. Thank you. Jobless claims are at a 45-year low. And since the election, 2.5 million new jobs have been created. And there are 2 million fewer Americans on food stamps in the country. We have consumer confidence near a 17-year high. Business confidence has now reached levels not seen since President Reagan. And all of that is before the president's historic tax cuts have even started to kick in. 90% of Americans are expected to see bigger paychecks. Three million more Americans have received bonuses. Oh, and by the way, those bonuses that the Democrats like Nancy Pelosi, they're calling thousands of dollars in bonuses crumbs. Uh, it's a crumb if you're a hundred million dollar net wealth person like Nancy Pelosi. Are those crumbs? I don't think that's a crumb. No. All right. Also, on the economy, President Trump is reversing what was a precipitous decline that we witnessed under eight disastrous years of failed Obama policies. President Trump is cutting regulation at a historic rate. We're eliminating 16 for every new regulation enacted. Look what it's done for the energy sector alone. ISIS has been crushed because he has allowed the military to do their job. We are now rebuilding the military. Thank you. And the president's demanding that the border, border wall be built in any immigration legislation. Now, if a Democrat had accomplished half of what President Trump has at this point in their presidency, the liberal media would be trying to put this individual on Mount Rushmore. They want Obama on Ru Mount Rushmore in spite of his failure. But we also have those in the media in this country. That's not how they operate. Now, for over a year, the news media, colluding with, of course, liberals in this country and basically advancing their agenda, they have been hyperventilating over what we have exposed so far as a hoax, a conspiracy, a fabrication. And that is they created about Donald Trump and Trump-Russia collusion, even though the media knows there's no evidence to prove any of this is true after nearly 18 months. There is zero evidence, but yet look at the disgraceful coverage you get every single night from your so-called mainstream media. A dizzying 24 hours in the Russia investigation, no longer just inching toward the president. This morning, it is more like careening. I think this is a potentially more dangerous situation than Watergate, and we're at a very dangerous moment. And that's because we are looking at the possibility that the president of the United States and those around him during an election campaign colluded with a hostile foreign power to undermine the basis of our democracy. Donald Trump is afraid. A political hurricane is out there at sea for him. We'll call it Hurricane Vladimir, if you will, the whole <laughs> Russian thing. This is evidence of willingness to commit collusion. There's outright treason. I mean, there is no question uh, that what he is doing is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Tom Friedman said the election hacking is at the caliber of a Pearl Harbor or a 9-11. Do you agree with that? I completely agree with that. Donald Trump now sits at the threshold of impeachment. Let me get the react. Uh huh. It just shows you the people in the media are nothing but liars and frauds. And by the way, they're really just an extension of the Democratic Party. By the way, speaking of liberal Democrats, they've been in lockstep with the media. And you'll notice they all say the same thing. They parrot each other. They're fake, phony talking points in their little bubble. So you've had Democrats, the media, over a year pushing a made-up false narrative about so-called collusion. But now it's all beginning to start boomeranging back as I predicted at the beginning of this year. Everything the media has accused Donald Trump of and his campaign of doing with Russia is exactly what Hillary Clinton and the DNC and Fusion GPS and Christopher Steele are all guilty of, and people should go to jail and likely will go to jail over all of this. And that is the real Russia collusion story. 
And unlike the media's fake news narrative, we have real concrete, incontrovertible evidence of real crimes and real wrongdoing. Let's look at the phony dossier, for example. Hillary Clinton, the DNC, they paid over 12 plus million dollars for the former British spy. Oh, I thought foreigners weren't supposed to influence our elections. Anyway, to create a completely unverified dossier that used Russian government lies and sources and Steele, who hates Donald Trump, didn't want him to win the election, then briefs the media outlets, let's see, like the New York Times, the Washington Post, Yahoo News, the New Yorker, fake news, the whole network, CNN, and they try to influence the election and manipulate the American voters. And Fusion GPS, their co-founder, Glenn Simpson, he testified that the Clinton campaign and the DNC were aware of all of this media outreach. Now, that sounds an awful lot like that they were using a phony Russian narrative, phony Russian information that they bought and paid for to influence the American people and to win the election that way. And then on top of that, you got Steele meeting with the FBI, Steele giving them all of this Russian sourced information. And we now know from two GOP memos that that dossier was used to lie to a FISA court judge, all in an effort to get a warrant to spy on a Trump campaign associate and the campaign, that of course being Carter Page. And the memos also are exposing how former FBI Director Andrew McCabe, he testified without the dossier, the application for that warrant would never have even even been applied for, certainly not approved. And we know from the Grassley-Graham memo that the bulk of that application consisted of Hillary Clinton's bought and paid for dossier. Now remember, this is the dossier that James Comey testified under oath was salacious and unverified. The FBI and Fusion GPS, they never bothered to even begin to corroborate this. And then you had Comey, remember back in January of 2017, briefing the president-elect before he was inaugurated about how the dossier existed. And he said it was unverified and salacious. Now, that was only months before when he, in 2016, in October, well, he was, that dossier that's unverified was good enough to use as a justification to spy on Carter Page. This is what we call the deep state in action. This is unelected Obama holdover bureaucrats. They thought they knew better than you, the American people, about who should be the next president. And make no mistake about this, the deep state tried to stop Donald Trump from ever becoming president, and now they're doing everything they possibly can do to damage and destroy his presidency. And at one point, remember, at the beginning of his administration, over 125 leaks in 126 days. Now, here's the thing about all of this. The corrupt officials are all now being exposed. They never thought this would happen. Everything is boomeranging back on them. And as we like to say on my Twitter account, TikTok, what we have been reporting on for the past year is only a small sample of what is coming. We expect the Inspector General's report to have a lot of new information, and that will be coming either by the end of this month or early next month.